our holidays are based around the Judeo-Christian calendar. You know, I've never had to justify to anyone that I went to Mass on Good Friday or that I celebrate Christmas. Um, but yet, when it comes to our students from different backgrounds, um, when Eid falls during a school day or on a school day or during the school year, how do we um, accommodate for that? Um, students are asked to validate their absence. I can't imagine how a student feels if they've been asked to validate an absence because they were celebrating a religious day. We're now living in a culture that's radically changed in Waterloo Region over the past 35 years. And now people need to learn to know each other without thinking of proselytizing each other or thinking of converting each other. And we can do that. And as we understand the other, we also begin to know why the other um, thinks the way she thinks or why the other um, has particular habits that are important or why the other person isn't in school a particular day. Faith days uh, sometimes do have a, a little bit of variation between one day um, simply because of our criteria, the religious criteria for celebrating the event or a festival on a certain day. Um, they have uh, set up a list uh, with not only the Muslim holidays but Catholic holidays obviously, the uh, Jewish holidays, uh, some of the Buddhist holidays, Hindu holidays and so that list has, uh, has helped. Well, I don't know if people even know that I'm Hindu. I believe in dis different festivals, and I would tell them that I believe in different gods. My family and I, we celebrate Diwali and Holi, which are two of the major Hindu festivals. Like normally, we celebrate it on weekends if possible, or after school. I think it would be good to celebrate on the day because that's really the day when it should be celebrated. I'll tell the teachers that I have a high holiday and we have to miss it. In elementary school, we just say I'm Jewish, so I, I have my high holidays. They're like, oh, okay. But now it's more you have to explain it, why you're gone. So it starts with Rosh Hashanah, the new year in the fall. And then 10 days later is, is Yom Kippur, which is a fast day, the Day of Atonement. Most likely Jewish children who were observing those days simply would not go to school on those days. The multicultural calendar, every school is given one and it is really fabulous. You can also pray see, you know, you can go to Google and find out a paragraph, that's all you need. It's tremendous for my own children to have someone recognize their holiday. But if there is no one in the class, it is still just reminding the students in that class that there are other ways of being. I would hope that um, it, it becomes a, a day when I say the word Vesakhi and people know that it's like Easter. Uh, so when I say to my students that I, I'm celebrating Vesakhi on April 14, they're not sure what that is. Why is it so that uh, after 110 years of a minority community being in uh, a visible minority community, a faith community being in Canada, what do people in Canada not know about Vesakhi or Gurprab? The Vesak day, the Poson day, um, the Sri Lankan New Year, Independence Day, February 4th. And at my old school when it was Vesak day, or I don't know what day it was, but it was an important thing for Buddhists, they announced it. So in Baha'i Faith, we have these things called holy days. So it's basically days we put aside to either celebrate the birth or the passing of an important figure within our religion. We need to like leave school to do this, but a lot of times like in high school when there's like a lot more work, it's harder to do that because like while you're slowing down, like the school is still like moving forward, there's still like work going on. We have nine Baha'i holidays during the year. On those days, uh, the kids, our kids, don't go to school. And uh, uh, usually it's very well accepted and, and we are very thankful for that. We basically call the school and say this is a religious holiday and they don't come to school and this thing and, and it has been accepted. But it's really up to the family to decide how they will participate in that holiday. So um, one family 
who would be celebrating the same holiday would be away for one day, but the next family might have their children out for three. So I would suggest that on religious holidays that our school secretaries probably for up to about three or four days are still tracking and uh, managing you know, that attendance data, which is, is critical in being accurate in our system. We're recording this on December the 12th and Christmas is, is such an overwhelming fact. They'll wish me a Merry Christmas and I'll just say, yeah, Merry Christmas. But it feel kind of feel left out because they never say Happy Hanukkah or Happy Passover. You'll have uh, schools playing Christmas carols around Christmas time over the PA system. Uh, that uh, is, is a, an intrusion on our right to freedom from religion. Carols are just specialized religious hymns, so really shouldn't be played over the PA system. They asked, can we do Christmas celebrations in the class? And I was really surprised and I thought, why wouldn't you? Because keep in mind, school is also teaching my kids about other people's cultures, faiths and practices and respect, and I want that for them. Having a Christmas tree in the foyer is fa fabulous, but don't call it a holiday tree because it's clearly a Christmas tree, right? So um, things like that, you wouldn't have a Hanukkah menorah, a big Hanukkah menorah in your foyer and call it a holiday menorah. That would, no one would ever do that. So I think um, acknowledging symbols for what they are and equally um, educating. We don't celebrate Christmas. We don't celebrate birthdays. We don't celebrate Easter. We are politically neutral, so we don't get involved in political or um, things like wars or things like that. But nowadays, they have become so knowledgeable about our beliefs. At Pruder, anyway, they don't celebrate just Christmas and Santa Claus, right? It's much more of a general celebration of holidays. That's fine. And I think the only thing around Christmas that would be the issue for us would be Santa Claus. You need to draw the flags. Remember on your map you said you had family from India? So you need to draw My kids were very shy and the teachers in, in attempting to accommodate them would ask them about the holidays and so they would find themselves having to sort of say what the holiday stood for uh, if they could have done a little bit of reading and told the class rather than centering out my children uh, that would have been a great way to do it I would say. There are some very simple things that you can do I mean they've talked about announcements consulting with somebody on how to pronounce the holidays putting up signs in different languages putting up displays uh, for festivals of light and having books out and materials so that they can see what other people celebrate. Love days and Thanksgiving and Valentine and Halloween and every, I mean, so, but for us, I mean, so sometimes they, they feel sad about, oh, what is ours? Where is, where is our festival? If they allow the student to experience their eat day, uh, what they're doing, the job and all music, and in the same vice versa to the other faith, if, they, if my daughter knows what, what the, her friend, who she, she's from the other faith, if she, if she talks about that thing, so they should know that what they are doing, right? In grade one, his teacher did a wonderful job of discussing Diwali, of discussing different cultures. You know, there can always be discussions on how much more can be done, but at the end of it, I really think we have a very open environment and I'm happy about it. Sure, we can celebrate diversity in a modest way, which, which again brings in positive, not become a divisive thing that this particular group has a five holidays, I have two holidays, you know, that kind of thing. Not only just accept and tolerate different faiths and beliefs, but also um, celebrate them and practice them and show that, you know what, we're really trying to make, making an effort and going out of your comfort zone. I think this is a real challenge for public education because there is a dominant religion and uh, how to make uh, people who are not of that religion really feel included is, is not easy. But if public education could figure out a way um, of really including everybody and really making everybody feel equal, I think that would be uh, a huge step forward. <laughs>